Hello and welcome to another episode of Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. A few weeks ago, we took a look at how to bring 3JS into our Webflow projects. And we started by creating a simple project and, and laying out the basic structure into actually how we bring that and merge that with the HTML. If you haven't taken a look at those episodes, I'll leave a link in the cards and in the description below, but there's a playlist that we're sort of building up. I thought now would be a great time to take a look at starting to organize our code because if we take a look at basically our project so far, here's our current scene here, and we just have this big, just a whole bunch of code here, which we can logically start to break up and start to organize so it doesn't start, so it's not feeling all kind of just confusing to kind of work with, to be honest. So we're going to take a look at organizing it and, and talk, kind of talk you through it all. And we're going to be using classes to be able to do this. So if you don't know anything about classes or anything like that, this would be kind of a good way to um, to kind of get the basics, basically. I think now would be a great time to announce that I've actually started a new coding channel that's more specifically geared towards the more intricate side of coding outside of Webflow, outside of no-code concepts. It's the AI type of stuff, interactive type of stuff that I like to talk about, uh, and, and hopefully some more in-depth 3JS stuff, because there's only so much we can do within Webflow, uh, and there's only so far I can kind of take it there. So if you are interested in kind of learning a bit more about the coding side as opposed to the Webflow side, then give us a follow, give us a subscribe over there, and I'll see you over on that channel. But in the meantime, let's jump right back to our 3JS project here. We've been working inside of Code Sandbox for the entirety of this project and then copying over to an embed element inside of Webflow. Uh, if you haven't seen, if you don't know how to do that, again, I, I suggest you go back into the previous episodes. I'm not gonna be jumping into Webflow here just because everything we do here, we're copying directly into the embed element inside of Webflow. So I'm gonna stick inside of Code Sandbox. I'm more comfortable there. We can see the results right there next to us. It's just a bit more of a simpler work throw. So let's dive into this. Let's start to organize our code and I'll explain to you how JavaScript classes sort of make sense. At the top of our code here, I'm quite happy to leave in the importing of three um, there, but we can start to write our own class here. And we can literally do that by simply writing class and let's just give this a class name, which let's just give it the class name experience. It's not um, important what the class name is or we, all that matters is that we give it an actual name. The second most important uh, function inside of a class is the constructor function. And you can think of this like the function that just automatically gets called when you instantiate a new class, when you load a new class, right? So if on here, I just create a constructor and it's the same sort of format as you, you come to expect and I console log this, hello world, and we save this, you'll notice that there's nothing going on in the console. Now we need to instantiate this class uh, and we can do this by just saying new experience and then calling that and you'll see that we have our constructor function being called automatically on loading and we can actually pass this just like any other function we can pass this constructor some values so it could be um anything it could be let's put that there and put our a func uh, a variable in there and then just console log that variable so uh, just give that a refresh and you get that console log just there so just like any other function we can pass in our constructor values but we're not going to be doing that today because uh, that's really not the point of the lesson. I just wanted to show you that this constructor class gets called automatically on every single instantiation of the class. So what sort of stuff would you probably put into this constructor? Well, you're going to call methods from within inside the constructor. And that's where we're going to start to break this 3JS code apart. We're going to break it into logical functions that make sense and that make it a little bit more readable. So for example, we've got our scene here. We've got some, we've got cameras here. We've got geometry here. We've got 
our renderer here and we've got some um, event listeners here and things like that. So that's how we're going to break it up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to set canvas and we're going to make that a function and we're just going to move this inside of our set canvas function. And the important thing to know is that it, within a class, we have the concept of this and kind of gets hard to teach when you talk about this and this and this all the time, but this applies to the class itself. For example, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to type this dot canvas equals set canvas. And I'm going to return within here document dot, um, well, the WebGL basically. So if I console log this dot canvas, save that, refresh this. Oh, apologies, this dot set canvas. Then you can see that we're console logging our canvas uh, in here. Alternatively, we can simply call this function and, and then within here, set the canvas as that. This is exactly the same thing. Nothing changes. It's whatever you prefer it to do, whatever you prefer to do. Personally, I kind of prefer this. It just looks a little bit cleaner. Uh, the fact that everything kind of gets set and all the rest of it inside of that function. So our canvas is set. Secondly, we want to get our scene. Set scene method. This dot scene equals. So you can see instead of the const scene, we're basically replacing it with this dot whatever it is. And then we want to be able to call that uh, this dot set scene up here. Set cameras inside of this. this dot camera, we need to say this dot scene add camera and this dot cam our camera is no longer camera it's this dot camera so we need to update all of those things and then we've got some geometry here set geometry I think that's how you spell it so inside of the geometry I want to change this dot box because we want to access the box outside of the set geometry method, but we don't necessarily care about material or geometry. We can leave those scoped within that function. So it's only this dot box that we need to access outside the function. So we change it to this dot box. And then of course we need to update that here. We need to go this dot scene and we need to go this dot box. And there's our geometry starting to take shape here. No pun intended. Here's our renderer here. So once again, set renderer. I hope this is making sense. Um, let me know down in the comments if something isn't making sense and I'll explain it. But ultimately, we're trying to break our code up into logical chunks here. So this dot renderer is there. Um, there's a window resize function, which we need to remove. Let's create our tick function, which gets called on every tick. And pop all of this inside of the animate function. You can remove that one now. This dot camera position, this dot box. We need to get mouse this dot material, this dot renderer, save that so it cleans itself up. And we're going to need to move these variables into the global scope. So inside of the constructor, we can set these variables here. So this, this dot, this dot mouse, this dot is hovering, scroll position. So this Again, you can see why the word this is quite hard when you're teaching. Um, because we're referencing the camera here, we need to put this after the set cameras because the cameras don't exist at this point. So let's do that. 
and do that where camera we know that camera exists it's a little bit less tidy but ultimately it's um you know it works so so now we're left with basically a bunch of we've got event listeners here so we're going to bundle these in to a global sort of event um method here called basically set events and if I um, set events, whoops, we need to actually call that event function. So here, down here, tick uh, this dot animate. Now let's copy our events into the set events scene or set events function. And we can leave them there. We can leave them there. But I just want to show you how much cleaner it might be if we break these out. So let's take this resize function. Um, we can break this out into our uh, their own functions, which might may or may not read a little bit more clearer. So let's do this. We need to then update this camera window, this dot camera, this dot renderer, and then we have this window resize function, which we can then move into window resize. Uh, similarly, this one here will do uh, window scroll, and this would update to this dot window scroll update that one there finally we'll call this one this dot um, mouse move and this to you might read a little bit more um, cleaner it's up to you whether you want to break these out I, do, I quite like it but just make sure that you reference this wherever you need to do it so this will take the e method here uh does that need e might as well pass it in you never know and then again we might need it there but just going to take a little look around to see if um we're forgetting anything this dot scroll position this dot is hovering this dot scene this dot camera this dot animate and let's just take care of this last little one let's just move that into the events one ah, that looks like it's broken there uh, cool tiles for each read orientation so box does not exist Let's just take a look at oh, this dot set geometry. So then we need to update the, this dot canvas. Render is not defined. I hope you're starting to see the point here. It's a bit laborious, but when you set it up, uh, canvas, oh, there we go. Um, but once you kind of get into the swing of things, it will start to become like second nature basically okay so this is so this is um where scoping kind of changes itself basically and we need to redefine what this is okay because we, we we're referencing this here but with this inside of this function is the window so what we can do is we can go bind and then this bind this find this uh, and still in the animate function which could again be a bind this see if that works perfect okay editing sam here because i realized i didn't do a very good job of explaining what was going on there but basically inside of event functions 
redefines what this is. So then we need to forcefully redefine what this is. And you can do that with the bind method. And at the point of us adding the bind method, this, the context of this, is the class. I'll show you a cleaner way of doing it now, which I personally prefer, and I'll leave as the link to the code pen as well. So let's quickly do this. Uh, so instead of putting the bind method here, I'm gonna take all of these, I'm gonna copy those, delete the bind, and then up here, I'm going to say, I'm gonna go this dot window resize equals this dot window resize bind this. So once again, copy, copy, and then the animate has one, I believe, to this dot animate equals that. Clean those up. You have to have these above before you're calling your functions, basically. So I hope that's a bit easier to follow. I hope it's a bit cleaner. But ultimately, we need to redefine what this is. As you can see, we've it took a little bit of work to make sure we're changing this to all the relevant places. But now, and and probably to our to our credit as well, because we were getting those errors, we we're actually <clears throat> we actually able to see which function the errors existed in. So again, it was just a bit more a bit more easy to read and a bit more manageable. So if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like. I actually have a Discord, which is free to join, uh, where you can ask questions to me directly about all this kind of stuff. And finally, do check out my new channel if you are interested in exploring with a little bit more detail about more complex coding subjects. So until next time, happy no coding.